You're listening to the Buildify Method Podcast, where we're all about mindset, systems, and profit. As a nationally recognized business consultant, coach, and speaker, your host, Aaron Keith, is passionate about supporting the entrepreneur community by sharing his knowledge gained from coaching over 10,000 entrepreneurs in nearly 20 years at companies ranging from billion-dollar enterprises and celebrities all the way to Main Street and small startups. Each Buildisode's blunt, no-bullshit conversation is led by Aaron along with his co-host, Ryan Coyne, a veteran tech consultant and nationally recognized speaker. Each week, Aaron and Ryan deconstruct mental and physical aspects of the topics that challenge all successful entrepreneurs, while also providing coaching, insight, and specific advice on distinctions that affect all growth-minded entrepreneurs. So listen up. It's time to work on your business, not just in your business. Hello and welcome. My name is Aaron Keith, and I'm joined with my co-host, Ryan Coyne. Today's podcast is very timely based on what's happening uh, in in the economy and in the world. Uh, Ryan and I have gotten hundreds of emails over the last few days asking lots of different questions. And so we felt it was really important to put a voice uh, to the entrepreneur community. And today's topic is on thriving in a down economy. We are going to cover some tips, some tools, some strategies, um, a, a bevy of different things that we feel are absolutely critical for entrepreneurs to understand to deploy in their corporations and with their businesses to really be thriving at this time when it's not the normal conversation that's out there right now. So Ryan, let's kick us off. Yeah, I'm really excited about today's topic because it's it's something that people need to find ways to turn it into opportunity that doesn't have to necessarily always be a direct opportunity as far as sales or, or you know interacting with your client base. It can be an opportunity for yourself as well. So, you know, there's, there's, you've been in the business a very long time, right? You have a ton of experience. Everybody talks about how they've been with you forever and you helped them start all these different things. So you've seen it. You remember, you know, 08 and, and different, you know, downturns and upturns and good times and bad times, all these things. In, in your experience and in your opinion, what is the best way for a business owner to approach a down market? I think the first thing we have to look at as business owners is how we're coming at this. This is your opportunity as the entrepreneur, as the CEO, the the founder, to be the voice in your industry, to be the leader. And it's not only just good for your business, but it's also empowering to you as the individual, right? Because we can either be a victim and we can just be at the effect of this, or we can be a leader and we can be at choice in this. And I choose to stand up as a leader and be a voice and to make a difference for the entrepreneur community. And I encourage all of you to do that in your industry. Start putting out videos, podcasts, webinars, you know, single subject emails. This is the opportunity to start pumping out really solid, very informational and educational content to people. That's a great way for you only, you know, not only to make a difference, but to start getting your brand, getting your business known in the greater community of people who don't know you yet. Yeah. And something that you've been also doing that you told me about is that you're, you're making calls, right? And business owners that you're close with are making calls just to share in the sentiment that people are feeling and to try to be the voice of calm and reason that people know to come to you for, right? So if, if you're the kind of person in your group or in your, your uh, business alliances, um, you know, even whether it's clients or peers, it's, it's important to reach out and to provide that, especially in times like now, because even in our personal lives and in our business lives, people don't necessarily remember, you know, the monotonous in between, right? They remember when somebody's there for you in a crisis and what that voice does when you actually need it. Yeah. So a couple of very specific things just on this specific question that I want you guys to take note of is your message. Your message should be coming from a place of making a difference. That's going to be the most well-received, most universal message. Try to find a way of making a difference for your business community, for your client base, your customer base, that needs to be the focus of your message in the down economy time. 2008, it worked wonderful. It's working wonderful now. And remember the different mediums. This is a great opportunity to start to utilize video. If you haven't utilized video for your company, now is a wonderful time, right? Because a lot of people aren't uh, spending a lot of time together right now, like face to face. So those videos are an opportunity for someone to see your mannerisms, see your eyes, see, you know, almost there's an energetic exchange with videos. 
So it's not as good as in person, but it's the second closest thing to it. Single subject emails, a very short, very focused, very targeted email, providing value and resources for your customer base. Phone calls. Listen, everybody's around. Everyone's reachable right now. Get on the phone, start connecting. You know, if you need to get groups together, teleseminars, webinars, wonderful opportunities, start gathering your community, start providing leadership, right? Start providing value to them. So those are some of the resources that I recommend for this question. We, we definitely also want to talk about, you know, hindsight being 2020, if anybody could have predicted something like this, of course, you would want to take steps to get yourself ready for it. Uh, but whether, whether it's beforehand or it's in the, you know, the beginning of what feels like a, a painful period like mm-hmm. right now, you know, what can businesses do to set themselves up powerfully for something like this and for a potential drop? Yeah. So I'm really excited about this question. I, I, I know you got a lot of emails about this. I've gotten emails and text messages and messages on, on social about this. The thing, like the, the absolute bullseye is finances, right? Think about it for a second. Most of us get concerned or worried or buy into the fear or the scarcity conversation that's out there in the world when we don't have something. Finances is one of the most pivotal pieces for business owners. And in conjunction with that, it's also one of the pieces that we have not been taught as Americans. As business owners, very few of us really truly understand money. Very, no one's taught us how to manage that money, how to grow that money, the proper ways of managing and growing it, interacting with that money. So we're, uh, for most of us, we're, we're a little short, you know, short on education here. So there's a couple really key takeaways I want to address. So you guys should write this down. First, everybody needs at least three months of business reserves set aside. There's a lot of nuances here. So I'm going to kind of keep it high level on this conversation. We're going to do a separate podcast just on finances alone. We'll do a deep dive. But right now, you all want to understand you need at least three months of business reserves. Depending on your industry, that may change. Real estate is an industry where I need you to have four or five, six months. So certain industries need a little bit more reserve, but the bare minimum is three months of operating expenses saved. So on the personal side, you need about six months of reserve set aside. Bare minimum, six months of reserve set aside. Now, I know that's not something that all of us can do right now or right away, um, but it is something that all business owners should have a business goal for 2020 to start working on their reserves, business and personal, and starting to get those reserves into the correct positions. I also recommend that your business reserve account is not your main bank account. I need you to open a separate bank account. So it's something that you're not dealing with, you're not looking at, you're not relating to. It's set aside, it's out of sight, out of mind. Now, that being said, the next structure is your budget. Very, very few business owners that I run into have what I would consider to be an accurate budget. They have a rough budget. That doesn't count. There is no close in finances. You either have a budget that's accurate and working or you don't. This is your opportunity right now to do a deep dive into your business finances and your personal finances. Start going through that, updating your budget. Every time people do this, they tend to notice there's expenses in there that you don't necessarily need. Okay. Now there's a caveat when, when I say that, when I say there's expenses in there that you may not necessarily need, I do not mean start going at this from a scarcity perspective and slashing your budget. That's not what I mean. You're going to find things that you signed up for that you forgot. You have subscriptions, you have things you're paying for that you're not even using anymore. It's an opportunity to do some spring cleaning on your business budget. It starts to bring some awareness, starts to bring some integrity to your finances. When you understand your finances, and I mean really understand your finances, you are empowered as a business owner. And this is a place that most people are not as empowered as they could be. So that's some of the biggest takeaways that I would do right now is start getting that business budget, that personal budget together and start looking at how you can reduce some of these expenses. Wow. 
I bet there's a lot of our listeners right now that are nodding their head and feeling just as empowered as that would be intimidating. Yeah. And if any of you need a, a budget, please feel free to email myself and Ryan, and I can email you over an Excel business and personal budget that I use with all of my clients. All right. So now that we've covered the finances and the budget, I want to turn the microphone over to you. Ryan, to have someone be empowered in their business means that they have a plan, right? They have a financial plan. They have a business plan. They have a plan in place. So when things happen, when the economy adjusts or there's you know natural disaster, people can adjust nimbly and quickly and, and keep, keep working, keep doing what they do. So I know technology is a huge cornerstone to this. When you have clients, what do you recommend for them in the technology world so that they can adjust quickly? Awesome question. And I get this all the time. In fact, I am physically racked from having answered this and performed it in real time over the last week. Um, this, this goes differently for many people, of course. Different people have different regulatory considerations. It's not an option for some people to work from home because of the security concerns about working remotely. Um, and, it, and everybody has a different level of what they need in order to continue doing business. Um, generally, having, having a, a check-in with yourself about whether or not your home computer or your laptop is up-to-date enough is something most people don't do. I've gotten a lot of calls over the last seven to 10 days from people who say, I haven't used it in quite a while. Some people still even have Windows 7 from a very old computer that they're just kind of, you know, brushing the dust off of it so they can give it wow. some really good burn over the next uh, next couple of months potentially. <laughs> um, and, you know, some businesses, like we had somebody last week, um, 100 users, big fashion company on Fifth Avenue in New York City, that they said we need 100 people to be able to work from home starting on Friday. Wow. With two, day, two days prep. And they work with very large files. So working remotely, you know, connected to a server wasn't totally a choice. So they all of a sudden had to go out and get new computers for everybody to have at home. Oh my gosh. To remote in their computer in the office. So they had the you know the large files working off of the server the way that they would if they were sitting there. It's it's different for everybody. The the first step is always making sure that you've got a disaster recovery plan, a okay. DRP. They have like a, a, a BDR as a backup and disaster recovery plan. Yeah. Your IT company or your IT person should be able to answer the question, what happens if I do not have access to my office? What happens if my office building were to, you know, heaven forbid, burn down? Mm -hmm. uh, what do I need to have set up and ready to be able to securely access my data and make sure that nobody else can access my data? Uh, people have heard VPN. So having your IT company make sure that they're or your IT person make sure that you've got a VPN that you can connect to to be on your server or connected to your office so that you can bring your phone home and just plug it in and have it work from there. Some people don't have their router right next to where they use their computer at home. So hardwiring a phone doesn't really do them much good. So having your phone system be something modern that has something called unified communications where you can have an app on your cell phone that basically acts as your office extension mm -hmm. so that your calls are routed directly to your phone. And when you call people back, the caller ID is the office and not your personal cell phone. Right. Ultimately important if you are the owner of a business and you don't want everybody to have your cell phone, it defeats a lot of the purpose of having staff because everybody will end up calling your cell phone. That is a nightmare. <laughs> we don't want that. No. So having remote access software, if you're going to roll your own uh, options like VNC Connect and a whole bunch of others that I'll put in the, in the show notes, VNC Connect is really, really awesome. Super cheap. I think it's like 40 bucks a year, which compared to log me in, which is like 600 a year can make a big difference and largely is the exact same thing. So in the show notes, I'm going to put uh, a bunch of different awesome tools that will help you work from home really efficiently. Um, some people need a lot more than the average person. Yeah, it absolutely. Like it. Aaron, did you know this, that there is actually a backup to the New York Stock Exchange? I didn't know that at all. No. A physical second duplicate copy of the New York Stock Exchange physically exists in upstate New York in case something happens to the one in Manhattan. That's crazy. And most people don't know that it's there. It's totally upkept. It's ready to go. If a 9-11 ever happened again, they have a place that they can go and continue to operate the New York Stock Exchange. Wow. That's called a hot site. 
So some businesses, like some of our listeners, there's people who actually get office space where there's 5, 10, 20 or more computers and phones sitting so that there's an alternate place for them to go or partial staff and so on and so forth. So there's there's different levels of extreme and preparedness, but mm -hmm. it really comes to having, the, you always talk about having quarterly sit downs with your accountants or, or more frequently if necessary. Right. Um, and you know, different kinds of scheduled calls with the people in your life that represent the pillars of your infrastructure. Your IT company is one of those. You know, sometimes, you know, people accuse the IT people of not being proactive enough and only reacting. Well, how often are you asking them to actually sit down and talk about things like your That's business's right. continuity? It's no different. That's right. It's no different. No, I mean, this is really the business owner's opportunity to sit down with all of their professionals and start getting game plans in place. Listen, not to, I don't want this to come across as a fear-based conversation, but we do have auto insurance. Many of us have life insurance. You know, we have dental or health insurance. Like we have insurances for things just in case. Having protection around your business is no different. It provides peace of mind. So if or when something happens, you're good. And if you don't ever have to use it, no worries. You're exactly right. And, you know, I, I have had, you know, many clients over the last 10 days that had the opposite thing. I got a couple of thank you emails from people who didn't miss a beat and didn't need to call us because their internal communications and the way they manage their business and the way that they teleconference and the way that they host meetings with people, with customers and clients and, you know, get together with each other is all in Microsoft Teams or Slack plus Zoom integrated together. You know, they, and they had VPN set up and remote access to their computers set up and they know how to forward their phones mm -hmm. and everything is turnkey. Right. That's, that's the dream. You should be able to take a day off or be able to take a vacation or a staycation or be able to be home to, you know, be with your sick child or loved one or what have you and be able to just continue. That's the meaning of continuity. Absolutely. So shifting gears back to, you know, what the business owners can do in, in the, in the, uh, the down market potentially. Right. So we, we've talked about how to prepare. We've talked about, you know, how to approach it. We've talked about, you know, different things that you can be doing to make sure your finances are straight and, you know, ways to market and promote. But what are what are the ways that you can actually thrive? Like, how can you turn this into a tremendous opportunity for your business? Yeah. So in great question, we got a lot of that coming at us this week. Just like 2008 or when there's natural disasters, you know, you have to understand that things will come back. Um, an analogy that I was taught from my teacher and that is very near and dear to me is the ocean. So if you would all indulge me in the story, you know, when there's high tide, people get really excited, right? Business is flowing. When it's low tide, people get upset like there's something wrong. Remember, it's nature. You can't have high tide without low tide. And after low tide comes high tide. It's just the cycle of the flow. And we know we never like it when it's low tide, but it doesn't change the fact that it's, it's nature. It will happen. That's predictable. So the sooner we can get over our temper tantrum about it and start being more neutral and let, and having less of a reaction to what's so it's just what's so that's just the way it is. You can start to move that energy from being upset or frustrated or scared into being proactive, like, all right, cool, it's low tide. What can we do doing low tide? Because there's all kinds of things. We can go pick shells. There's all kinds of cool things that you can do when there's low tide. So in a business, it's no different. This is a great opportunity in your business to do the following. Start to really market. A lot of your competition is going to cut back because they're afraid. Fear-based mentality means you freeze and you start cutting back and conserving. I don't mean you know, that you should not cut some of your uh, expenses back potentially, but you don't want to do it based on fear or concern. This is a great opportunity to spend more on your marketing, spend more time on your marketing, spend some more resources on your marketing. Now's a phenomenal time to start increasing your footprint of a smaller marketplace. So as the marketplace comes back, like it always does on high tide, you're going to have a much bigger footprint of a much bigger marketplace. So that's step number one. Really focus on increasing your marketing. Double it, triple it. That's what you should be focusing on right now. If you're not doubling your marketing, then you're not understanding what I'm saying. 
Then you start to look at the sales side. That's the marketing side of this conversation. Now let's look at the sales side of the conversation. On the sales side, look and see, do you need to adjust your pricing so that you're competitive? You're being sensitive to the marketplace. Adjusting your pricing down is not bad. It's not wrong. Don't slash it, but be appropriate. Sometimes there's a time and a place to move your prices down to be sensitive to the market. It builds customer loyalty. Loyalty matters in down markets. Big time. The next thing you want to do is ask yourself, ask your staff, do some brainstorming sessions with other entrepreneurs. What other revenue streams could you put in place? Should one of your um, third or fourth place revenue streams be bumped up to number one right now? Do you need a new product? Do you need a new service right now? Now might be the time to reorganize what you've been focusing on for your products and services. I know for one of my companies, we've completely reorganized right now. And it's working great. It's a great adjustment. It's making a big difference for a customer base. So there's, those are two things I want you all to focus on, marketing and sales, increasing your marketing footprint and looking at your sales to see how you can adjust your revenue streams and your pricing models to be really sensitive to what's going on right now and capture market share. Yeah. I mean, that even impacts us. I mean, what we're doing right now, and you talked about doing things like phone calls and webinars and teleseminars and videos and things, our podcast, you know, we're already seeing an uptick in viewership in the analytics just in the last 48 hours. People are not sitting in traffic. People are not going to movies and sporting events or watching them or going to concerts or lots of things, you know, shows have stopped production. You know, right. it's, it's now all of the things that people are normally doing for entertainment they need you. This is your opportunity for you to be the entertainment by being informative and engaging right. and showing people what's special about what you can do for your clientele and if they should refer you in addition to all the ways that you can be shoring up the company and things that you might not have gotten to this year and things like that. Right. So, you know, yeah, do it. This is the time. This is the time that people will be looking for more content and not just bad news. Right. Every day, everybody wakes up and, and like a captain on a ship, damage report. You know, how bad is it outside? You know, correct. That, this, is, this is the opportunity to be something that is that that leader that you spoke about. It's every, everything you said is very empowering. It's exactly right. And this is the perfect time to start doing it. Yeah. Wonderful. So you know, w that that actually leads me to mindset because we we lead right into that with that sentiment is, you know, having a strong mindset is is something that we strive for all the time. We've covered that in previous build episodes, you know, but this is obviously, this is a big challenge. You know, this is something that really tests your, your intestinal fortitude, mm -hmm. you know, those big words of, you know, trial by fire and things like that. So yeah. what can business owners do to have a stronger mindset during challenging times like this? Well, just like you said, Ryan, I mean, when business owners wake up in the morning, the first thing they think about is damage report, damage report, what happened, what's going on, what's going to happen now. And that is the critical moment. You know, you and I did a really good uh, build a sode, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago on how to powerfully create a morning routine for yourself. I think your morning routine becomes even more powerful during a down economy or when there's challenges in the environment. This is your opportunity to get your mind right. So let's just be super straight and clear about this conversation. Your mind impacts the actions you take. Those actions then impact the results you then produce. So if there's a certain outcome that you want in your business, in your life, it all starts back with your thoughts, your point of view, your context, your belief systems. It all starts there. And your morning is that opportunity to shape it. You're either going to wake up in fear or concern or lack or some conversation like that, or you're going to wake up and you're going to get focused on what you said you're going to create this year what you're committed to creating this year, what you want to have happen, how you want to make a difference, you know, the, the products and service you want to get out to the world, how you want to take care of your team and your staff, and the impact you want to make on this planet. You're either going to wake up with that or you're going to wake up with fear and concern. The choice is 100% yours and yours alone. And how you do that is by having that morning routine. Just 5, 10, 20 minutes of your life, sitting down with your cup of coffee or tea, 
So it's just really important that the first thing that you're doing in the mornings is you're sitting down and you're going through those business goals, those personal goals, really getting grounded in your finances and your budget and your reserves. So you have a firm grasp on your finances, visualizing what you want, meditating for five or 10 minutes and really getting your brain quiet, journaling, writing down things that you're grateful for, doing a little bit of reading, focus. These are the activities that only take you 5, 10, 20 minutes of your life that center you, that empower you so that when you get up and you put on you know, your work clothes and you get into the office or you're interacting with your staff and your customers, you're being a force of reckon. You're being someone who's not messing around. You're being someone who's going to cause something in the world regardless of their circumstances. That's what it means to be an entrepreneur. That's what it means to be a CEO and a founder and a business owner. And that's who you are. You're someone who's committed to making a difference in the world and making a difference with your staff and your company. So you have to remind yourself of that. And that morning routine, that's one of the most powerful things that gives you that edge. So if you're able to listen to the podcast that we have on our, well, we could put it in the show notes on how to build a powerful morning routine. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's that's that resonates really powerfully with me, and I'm sure it does with much of our audience for sure. Thank you for sharing that. It's um, it's something that we all struggle with, you know, control over things, right? Right. That's that's also that's one of the things that we don't love to admit is that one of the reasons that we have this entrepreneurial spirit is because we feel that our influence is beneficial, and that potentially working for somebody else, our influence is limited. It's what somebody will accept from us versus what we want to in, inflict or instill our influence on or over, you know? Correct. And that in a situation like this, whether it's the economy or whether it's a, an, an invisible enemy in a, in a virus or anything else, you know, people try to assert control. That's why you see them, you know, panic stocking up different things and running out to do this and that. And, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all reactive. You're not sure what to do. But that powerful morning routine, man, that that's really sets your mindset for the whole day. You build that consistent good habit where you have control over, you know, all these aspects of your life. It grounds you. It gets rid of so much of that anxiety. You feel so much more centered. And all of a sudden, all that weight on your shoulders that you feel from people looking to you is something you can handle. Your foundation, mm -hmm. your legs underneath you is stronger to carry that, to wear that well. You know? Right. So I want to summarize what we covered so far tonight. So just as a recap, one of the main takeaways is know your numbers. You have to have the business budget. You have to have the personal budget. And you must have reserves on the business and personal side. That is one of the core takeaways. Two, now is an opportunity to expand your footprint, increase your marketing, start looking at how you can adjust your revenue streams and your price points, and definitely have a morning routine. Start taking care of that mindset. Don't let things in. Start putting up a nice wall for yourself, only positive content, start reading good books, listening to different podcasts, start meditating, get that morning routine going. Now is the time for that stuff. Well, we want to thank you. You know, your time is extraordinarily valuable and we hope that we've brought you some good peace of mind during a time where there's a lot of new information and a lot of uncertainty coming at us. And we want to be inspiring you with the fact that you can create certainty and security around your personal and your business life by installing the systems and using the tactics and techniques that we're trying to share with the entrepreneurial community here on the Buildify method. So we want to thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you next week. I'm going to make sure there's good stuff for everybody in the show notes for technology tools, remote access stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm going to put some reminders in there about Microsoft Teams and Slack and Zoom, different things you can use to make your business more nimble every day, not only when it's in a crisis or when anybody's working from home at kind of random. So thank you so much. Make sure you like and subscribe. It'll help other entrepreneurs that are like-minded like you want to join our entrepreneurial community and benefit from the tools that we are sharing. We look forward to talking to you next week.